I mean, if I'd stayed in the life that my parents saw for me, um, I would probably um, be 30 pounds overweight and drive a minivan and um, be thoroughly unhappy. Sorry about the minivan crack, but <laughs> there's no rules. There's no rules. There's no rules. Um, you know, and if there are rules, they're set by average people. So I'm not interested in them. The only rules I pay attention to are like gravity. <laughs> Don't fuck with that one. There's too many rules and not enough play. You know, play is where all the good stuff is. I often talk about, uh, you know, why such seminal work begins on a bar napkin. And it begins on a bar napkin because you're in a bar. Because you have, you're in an altered state and you're accepting of more mirth. Or you're just goofing. It's not serious. You're not at work. You're not shoving stuff through a grinder. You're playing. When I started making work, I wanted it to convey an idea. That was the main impulse. The making was always secondary. It was less important. And I never thought about it until I was somewhat well into my career and I was probably in my 30s and an important Swiss designer was talking to me and he said, you know what, you put all of your work together. He says, it's not about what it looks like, it's about what it says. And I, it was just like, because I realized their opportunity to put my opinion in my work. That has been kind of my driving thrust of, of teaching is the idea of like, get it to, you know, to have an opinion first, your opinion. Because a lot of designers are so used to trying to make other people happy first, you know, that they leave off that they have a sense of humor, that they've got a, a sense of design, a different sense of color and shape and timing. For me, it's always the hardest part is, is, is what it says. I realized just recently that, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty good designer. <laughs> By pretty good, I can get into the, you know, have two shows at the Museum of Modern Art. But even then, I'm a much better teacher. The reason I used to hate the Myers-Briggs test is that it would come up teacher. And in my uncreative mind, I could only see one form of teacher, and that's Mrs. Ionelli in fourth grade, right? I wasn't able to, f to see it in the larger picture and go, oh, wait, you know, I could be a teacher like George Lucas is a teacher. Through Star Wars, he was a teacher. He taught us about the Knights and the Boy Scouts and discipline, you know, through the Jedi. Uh, I could be a teacher like the Dalai Lama, somebody who just instills Confidence and smiles and giggles. Games be glory, games be glory, games be glory, games be glory. Our search for security and comfort is our ruination. It's our ruination because it makes us settle on things that we don't want. And at some point, you're going to come to it where it breaks your spirit. Just take risks. You got to take the first step. You can't have the other steps. You can't see the other steps. They will not be given to you. Those are a reward that will not be given to you until you take the first step. People say, well, you know, wow, you, you, know, you put out these videos every week and you know, they're, you know, they're so wise. And it's like, dude, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I'm, I have to do these things. I have to talk about these things. I can't not share. We talk about dangerous ideas and they're dangerous because they challenge the status quo. The people that come to the workshop have witnessed a certain level of that. And I take them through basically the struggles and the process that I always go through. And I care deeply for their situations and their problems because their particulars are mine. We all are in the same, the same fight. Details are a little bit different. And if I can figure out mine and help them figure out theirs, then we got a party. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> Too much fun. Back to work. But a calling is when you are, it's, you're, do, you're showing up and doing it not because you're getting paid, but because you have to. Most of the people who come to work with us are 35 to 45 and their career isn't enough for them anymore and they're looking for something else. 
Having a calling is an easy way to say it. Uh, what we really mean is that your life has a purpose. That's the difference. And hopefully that purpose is to serve others because that's the highest level uh, that a human being can achieve, is to serve others. Getting paid is great. Having a, a boat is great, I guess. I don't know. Um, and that's what most people are concerned about that. Most people are concerned about that end result. But the problem is um, they get there um, through a, a lazy, sloppy way. And even when they get there, it's not enough because they don't have a calling. They don't have a purpose. I think perfection stops you from starting a project because it's too big or perfection stops you from finishing a project because it's never perfect. And I think it happened a number of times here when we got down to the physical making of stuff, people were drawing something 16, 17 times and I had to stop them and I'd say, okay, which one is the first one you did? And they said that one. I said, okay, let's just, let's just use that one. Because you're making these decisions now. You're making aesthetic decisions that don't matter. This one you weren't thinking, but now this is all just too much thinking. It's just how it works. And you know, when people come to work with us, we have to let them understand that this is awesome. This, you, you know, you're not lost, you're searching. That's the process. If you wanna be born again, it's gonna take some squishing and some uncomfortableness. That's why people go to yoga class, to be pushed into tighter balls every couple of days, and then to realize all they have to do is breathe and relax into it and all of a sudden they can get into even tighter positions it's, that's the struggle that's the part that's you know that's just what it is if you're really living fully you're facing your fear every day you're pushing new avenues for your work that's all part of pain and struggle you know the buddha's first tenet is life is suffering but when you start to understand that and when you start to understand that the pain and the struggle is part of the process, then it's okay. Again, I'm a motorcycle fan. There's, there's guys who I, who I know who, every time I see them, they got like a busted this or a busted foot or a busted, you know, or they you know, take their shirt off and it's just all scarred up. And it's like, that's part of the process. That's how it works. You want to ride motocross and not fall down? We have to accept that. Most people shy away from it. Most people say, easy for you to say, or, oh, that's easier said than done. It's just because they don't want to enter that cave because they're afraid of what they'll find. You know, the only way out is through. I mean, you can't, if you don't face these things, they're just going to stick around. And why, then you've wasted your time coming here. We only get one shot and, you know, at the end of the line, you're not going to be concerned about how much money you made. You're going to be concerned about, did you stay in touch with your family and your friends? You're going to be concerned about, did you allow yourself to be yourself? I think love and play are probably the two big things because the reason we play is because we love our work and we love our audience. You know, I want to put more art into people's lives. So I've got a 20 year old and I've got um, a two year old and I've got another baby on the way. And having children in my life has always added to a level of exuberance and a level of joy and play. I have an amazing wife and partner who allows me to take chances and who is in it for the adventure. Um, and I think a lot of people don't have that and that makes it really hard. That makes it incredibly hard to move forward if you don't have a team. So I think love, is a, love plays a, a huge role in that. And, I, and it's funny because I haven't, I haven't had that thought uh, in, a, in a long time or, or ever thought about that aspect of it. Thank you.